Hello, I'm Douglas Maddy and welcome to Alter Perceptions. In this video, I'm going to be reacting to I spent $500 on magic to amaze my wife. Let's get into the video. I'm going to wow my wife with magic tricks. I never done magic tricks before, but I am set on absolutely making my wife go. Everyone loves a good magic trick. <laughs> That's what they all say. The first trick is drop out brass. This is what I got. This is what what was in the box. It's by Mr. Magic. I was gonna call myself Mr. Magic. And it came with instructions. Uh, it's made in India, as you can see. A plastic mold, like as bottle, has a hole, a steel ball in hole. The ball never out by the performer if it down. When it opens guidance, it becomes side of the ball. I'm even correcting it as I'm reading it. What does this mean? This is one of the things about what I used to have to contend with when learning a magic trick. I always found it really difficult to read magic instructions, especially when there was sort of like a cheaper version of the original trick and the, the instructions weren't written clearly. The great thing about YouTube is that you can learn magic off YouTube now. So if a magic trick is released, there's sometimes a link to a YouTube video just demonstrating because a picture speaks a thousand words and a video speaks a thousand pictures. So just by watching something, it's very monkey see, monkey do, and you don't have to worry about putting this finger here and that finger. You can just kind of pick it up very much more quickly watching video than reading dodgy instructions. Cool, let's move on to the next trick. That was awesome, thank you. Right, let's see how it goes. Matya, are you ready for the greatest magic show of all time? Sure. Yeah, trick number one. So this is usually a children's magic trick and it's known as a sucker effect. And the idea is that with children, they go, oh no, it's in the other one. And they go, no, it's in the other one because you're just moving it back and forth. And then it completely disappears, and it's not, apparently it doesn't just work on children. The first one was standard, uh, it wasn't that great, it wasn't that bad, it was a bit of fun. The second one was more of a kind of game, and it was kind of like a, a prediction on a, an end result of a game. It's got a good shuffling action there, so uh, again, this is putting the poker chips in, and now she's going to be taking them out by the looks of it. Put it out now. That's the one in your pocket. Holy <laughs> So the trick was good apparently, but it wasn't executed right. So let's see what the dog thinks. Alright, a card trick. Everyone loves a good card trick, right? It's very difficult to tell what he's doing here because it's just so blurry. I don't know why he's filmed this so blurry, but it's difficult to tell what he's actually doing. And there's no reason why he should be holding the card case in his hands at all. Too late, Marcia. I already have your card. <laughs> <No>! <laughs> Is this your card, Marcia? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and check. It's bolted tight. You're... <laughs> All right, don't. You, you look too close. <laughs> right, so I, will, I didn't think you were that strong, all right? <laughs> That's magic, baby. How's this magic show so far, 7 out of 10? Great. Uh, 7 out of 10? Wow, seven. You see, this is how much she loves him. You could see what he was doing, and she figured out at the end, and she still gave him a seven. And I want to use to wear a cape. Who does she sound like? Is it French off of Greece or something? Yeah, the guys really go for it, and that's how I got my nickname, Frenchie. What do you mean the thing's going to stay inside? You can just give it to me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was um, PewDiePie, amazing his wife with magic tricks and she gave him an 8 out of 10 for all the amazing magic tricks that he showed. Alright, so that's what we in magician terms call epic win. But, to be honest with you, you don't need to spend $500. In this video, I will show you three tricks, three decent tricks that you can do with any everyday objects without having to spend $500 and it will be really good, so keep watching. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here's a very good card trick, which is going to make you look like an amazing magician, which requires very little skill and practice. Let's get into the trick. So you're going to need a pack of ordinary cards and you're going to need something to make a prediction on. So a pen and paper is good or nowadays just to make it a bit more modern, it'd be good to use your phone. So I've taken a picture of a card on here. We're going to come back to that in a minute. And so now you're going to need somebody after the deck can be shuffled if necessary. I need someone to cut the cards for me. So just cut the cards so that I've got no handling of the cards whatsoever. That's lovely. And we'll just mark it there to where you've cut to so that we don't lose the place that you cut to. That's lovely. So now we're going to come over to the prediction that I made earlier on the phone. I took a photo of one of the cards, which you can see here, and it just so happens to be the exact same card that you cut to out of all the cards in the deck. So now that you've seen the effect, let's get into the secret. What I do in advance is I get one of the cards from the deck, it can be any one that you like, and I take a photo of it. So here's my camera, and I just take a photo of it, like so. And I then bring it up so you can see it, and I'll then just lock my screen so that no one can interfere with it and it needs me to put my code in. And I'll put it to one side. Now this card goes on the bottom of the deck. Okay, so you put that card on the bottom and the rest of the cards go on top. Now when you ask somebody to cut the cards for me, if you could cut the cards. What's happening is they can cut anywhere they like on there, so it looks like a free choice. And what you're doing is, you're taking these cards with the chosen card on the bottom and you're just putting it sideways so it makes a little crisscross like that. So if it was cut into the place that they would have cut to you would have taken this card and put it on there so it would have been the jack of diamonds but you're not doing that just by simply picking up the wrong half and putting it on and just squaring it up a little bit to make sure it's neat and tidy it makes all the difference because now you've forced the card. So when the spectator takes half the cards, all you have to do is pick up the other half of the cards and put them across sideways without showing the bottom just yet, the bottom card just yet and revealing it. Now what happens is that stays in that position. You then need a bit of a time delay. So you come over to your prediction and you type in your secret <laughs> code and you show the card that you predicted and then you come back to the reveal to show that it is exactly the same card and then you put the card back on top of the deck like normal and then you can eat at that point show all the cards are different and they could have had any one of the cards so that's the basis of the effect so you can take a photo and reveal the photo or if you don't have your phone on you could get a pen and paper and write down the three of diamonds on the paper and fold it up and get them to put it in their pocket so there's no way that you could go near it and that would make it even more impressive or you can do something that i like to do which is take the photo of it and then send them the photo on whatsapp but don't get them to open it so say, I'm just going to send you something on WhatsApp. Don't look at it just yet and hear it coming through, then perform the effect, then get them to open up the WhatsApp message with the attachment photo. And then once they've seen it and the time that it was sent, so it was before they did the trick, it's even more impressive because it's on their phone and it's in their pocket. And it was before the trick occurred. And so there's different ways of revealing it. There's a few different presentation ideas, but have a play around with it. And it's a very simple, easy force to do on somebody and predict their right card. So for this trick, you can either use a rubber band or a, an elastic hair band. So if you have um, a girlfriend or a daughter or a, like a, a girl that you're going to present this on and they have a hair band, it's going to be even more impressive. If you're performing this on somebody that's in the office at work and there's some rubber bands laying around, this would be impressive as well. It's the same trick, but just using a different prop. And when I'm performing, instead of using the darker colours, I like to take a nice yellow bright colour. The reason why I do this is because I usually wear black and so against a black background it looks even more impressive. But if you're performing somewhere that has a light background you might want to use a darker colour. But the colour really helps with the visual effect. So you're asked to borrow the hairband 
and then you show your hands empty and you literally just put it in between your two fingers and say watch it's going to jump with a click to my other two fingers and before they can react you do it back again like so so it jumps back to the top two the same with the rubber bands you can take the rubber band with the rubber band if it's loose like this one is the best thing to do is wrap it round twice so it's nice and tight because you want a bit of a bounce to it so that when you put it round your fingers it's not loose this is going to be an important part of the trick so if you've got a smaller rubber band that's great but if you've got a very loose rubber band just wrap it round twice a figure of eight to make it a bit more tighter fitting around the fingers and then do exactly the same thing just go like that and it jumps to the other fingers and again you can show it again click and it jumps all the way back up again and here's how to do it so you place the band over the top two fingers now from there with your other hand using your forefinger you pull the band back over all four of your fingers and when you open your hand again the band is naturally going to want to jump out and to do it from the bottom two fingers to the top two fingers just do exactly the same thing use the forefinger to pull the band over the fingers and then just open up the hand and the band will jump from the bottom two fingers to the top two fingers and just practice it and it will become so natural and easy and fun to do Okay, so for this trick, you're going to need a rubber band and one of the following items. I like to use a ring for this, but you can also do this with a key or you could even use this with a pen cap and I'll show you how all three can be used. So what you do now is you thread the rubber band through the ring and you ask somebody to just concentrate on the ring and they're going to move it with their mind. Just concentrate on the ring and it's going to gradually move up the rubber band. Just focus, it goes higher and higher. And it's all examinable afterwards. Okay, so this is the secret to the trick. You take the ring and you take the rubber band and once you've threaded it through, what you're doing is you're picking up a load of slack in this hand and you put the ring near the base. Now the ring's gonna kind of stay on there as long as you don't hold it at such an angle. You start not hold it at a 45 degree angle else the ring will just slide back down the, the rubber band. But you need to hold it at about half of that so that it's not straight, but it's just slightly up, but not at 45 degrees. So all you're doing is you're holding the slack in this hand and in this hand, it's just held normally. And all you have to do is, the trick to this is to let go of the slack of the rubber band very, very slowly through the top two fingers. And that allows the ring to go up the rubber band. And if you tell people they're doing it with their mind and to concentrate, they'll believe that they're doing it and making it move by itself. And the trick to this is to make sure that your hands don't move from one position and you just let it go very, very slowly and very, very smoothly. Just release the rubber band until it gets to your fingertips and then you can show everything is examinable. Another thing is to make sure that the band doesn't get too tangled. If the band does get too tangled, or another way of practicing is to snap the rubber band in half. If you snap the rubber band in half, this is very good for practicing. Because again, you're going to take the slack in your hand. So just let go of the slack and the ring will go up the rubber band. And just practice this so it's nice and smooth. And keep your hands still at all times. Don't let the ring move too fast or too slow. And just release the slack and that will allow the ring to go up the rubber band with greater ease. And if you don't have a ring, you can use a pen lid or a key with a hole in it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified of our latest videos.